Hello, we're still at the Sheffield Dock Festival and this slope right here is the Howard Street Screen where people can come and watch documentaries outside all day long. It's rad, it's sick, it's gnarly and I've picked up all of that weird lingo from the next film we're going to talk about. It's Lucy Walker's The Crash Reel about champion snowboarder Kevin Pearce and his recovery from a major accident. I spoke to Walker earlier today. Part of the reason it's mesmerizing is not just that the feats are so acrobatically compelling, but that you're so clear about the stakes. I mean, you just know that if they fall, and surely they must fall sometimes, because um, mistakes will always happen, uh, that the stakes are so high and the consequences will be so grave. And so that's also why I can't watch. So I'm kind of torn between this kind of sort of macho excitement and this sort of uh, sort of girlish horror. It's like someone set up the camera and said, OK, go over there perfectly in frame away from us. And then in the middle of frame, coming towards us, have a life changing crash and slither to the bottom of the frame. You can't imagine it's just a coincidence that it was filmed because it seems so spookily perfect. I think the conversation needs to start with what your plans are about riding on snow. How ready do you feel like you are to snowboard? I feel 100% confident. Not us. Not you? Not everybody. It's calling a spade a spade, isn't it, man? <laughs> Kevin was determined to get back on a snowboard and yet um, his doctors everyone was telling me, had told him that if he hit his head again, he would die. And yet, all he wanted to do was run around, jump off things. I mean, I just met the kid and I was terrified already about what he was going to do because he wanted to be so active. And he wasn't very aware about how injured he was, which is one of the things about tra traumatic brain injuries that makes them very tricky indeed, is that your brain, uh, perhaps trying to protect you, doesn't necessarily let you know how injured you are. And he definitely had some dissonance around that that was very clear to me and seemed very dramatic. And I suddenly thought, well, this isn't a sort of sad two-act story about a star who's crashed. It's a really interesting journey, and I have no idea where it's going to go, but I really want to find out. I just don't want it to die. I don't want to die either, Dave. I don't want it. I don't want you to die, that's fine. And then number two is that I don't want you to be in a wheelchair. And that I don't want you to be paralyzed. Is that, what, is that what you want? That's not what I want. I think those are all things that I could have happen if I fall. It happens to be an anti-snowboarding snowboarding movie, but it's a snowboarding film. You know, it's, it partakes of the thrill of the sport. You know, you get all the best moves. You get as many great snowboarding moves as I've ever seen in a snowboarding film. Um, you get more crashes than possibly anywhere else, you know. So and I don't think that's not a part of the power of it. Um, and I think we are all complicit. We are all rubbernecking, you know, beings. I wanted to call it the crash reel, and I wanted to include those ac accidents to really confront us with what we are looking at. What is this culture of extremity? And I think it's not just in sports, actually, I think it's in hot housing kids and in all, all of us are sort of compelled to do more and better and more extreme and be um, take shortcuts because there's so much pressure on us all to be uh, sort of moderationists so out of fashion somehow. And I feel like the Buddha, we should go back to the middle way. It's so glamorous, all this stuff. But what is the reality of a glamorous crash? And I, so I wanted to sort of really dig in and ask, what does a crash look like? And um, it's not a gag, you know, it's, it's, it's really um, unpacking, to use one of the words that everyone hates, it's really unpacking the whole uh, lifetime journey, which becomes this fable for growing up and becoming a man and accepting your disability or your limitations in life in a very nuanced and mature way, which is much less fun but is ultimately, you know, I think, how to live.